for more on what's happening in Europe and the energy markets. We're joined by Ted Nace. He's the executive director of the nonprofit Global Energy Monitor. Um, good to see you joining us from San Francisco. Um, let's start with the Nord Stream pipeline because th this, over the past 24 to 80, uh, 48 hours, has become quite the controversy. What is the West, or quite frankly, what's either side going to do about this? Um, well, uh, you know, they they don't really need to do anything about it because it, it hasn't actually been in use. Uh, it's been shut down since August, and uh, Nord Stream 2 never did go into operation. So this is kind of uh, a kind of a sideshow to the real story here, uh, which is the surprise out of Europe at how um, how really weak this turned out to be for uh, for Putin as a as a as a weapon. Uh, you know, right now, Goldman, Goldman Sachs is projecting that gas prices in Europe are going to actually be falling by 50 percent by spring. Um, and they're pre predicting that Europe will get through the winter and still have 20 percent of their gas supplies. Both, uh, so both, uh, it's, all, it's all turning out to be a little bit surprising. Both sides are accusing each other, basically. What is, and you can take, give me both sides uh, in terms of their response, but how would it benefit either side if one of them is right? You know, this all, that, that, the, the accusations flying in both directions are uh, obviously a, a byproduct of the tensions around Ukraine, but they're not really, it's more of a, it's more, more drama around the war really than a story about energy at this point. The situation for winter, um, numerous experts have said that there's enough gas. Everything will be fine. They'll, they'll, they'll do a little bit of rationing, and, but everything will be okay. Um, I, I want to get your take whether or not you would agree that everything's going to be okay this winter. Everything is definitely going to be okay this winter. Uh, Europe has a lot of options for gas. Uh, they, they're upping their, their output in places like Norway and Azerbaijan. Uh, they're bringing in a bit more LNG. Uh, they're they're upping their renewables. They're they're uh, you know they're just by resolving gas leaks, they save a tremendous amount of gas. So it's all those little things that add up that uh, turned out to be uh, sort of diffused this ticking time bomb that you know I'd say about four or five months ago, if you had talked to most of the energy ministers in Europe, they were basically extremely concerned. And now I think they feel like they've kind of got this. There's um, also a pipeline from Russia to China as well, and this isn't often talked about, but that actually has been shut down for a week. Apparently that was planned. Um, the relationship between China and Russia, how has that evolved over the last couple of months? Right. Well, that's the, this big new power of Siberia uh, pipeline. And again, the story is very similar. Uh, I think that China is, you know, when they see a, even a planned shutdown like that, it makes makes people nervous. The, the the larger story, again, is very similar in China, that gas is sort of on the verge of being eclipsed by renewables. And it's funny how it turned out that renewables, which used to look like kind of a sketchy thing, are turning out to be the non-dramatic but much more sort of forceful. So just as an example, this year, China is implementing 156 gigawatts of, of solar and wind. Now, just to compare, you know, we think of China as the place that builds a lot of coal. That's twice as much as they ever built at their top year of coal plant, uh, coal plant building, and it's six times as much coal plant capacity as they're putting in this year. So very quietly, the world is transitioning to renewables. And the great thing about renewables is nobody can bomb your you know, anybody who bombs a solar panel just bombed a solar panel. It's not going to shut down that system. So, um, you know, the, the, the thing that people don't talk about about renewables, it, they often talk about how it's a great solution to climate change, but it's also a great solution around energy security because renewables are so diversified and so spread out that they're really not vulnerable in the way that these long gas pipelines or these uh, LNG tankers are vulnerable. And that's a good thing for, uh, for energy security. You know, we, we can't predict what's going to happen with Ukraine. I mean, certainly we're, we're all trying to, but none of us really know what's going to happen, whether it's three months or six months from now. But where do you see Europe after winter? What have they learned? What will they do? And what does it look like in terms of the map of where they get their energy or how they get their energy? 
Right. Well, you know, they've, they've actually been through the toughest part already. Uh, gas prices in Europe have fluctuated so wildly, you know, since the beginning of COVID, it's been anywhere from $5 per million BTU all the way up to $70 per million BTU. And it's just been really hard on anyone trying to plant, you know, to run a company, a manufacturing company, or, or think about paying their, their gas bills this winter. Now that they've really confronted, sort of, it's like if you if you went up and you looked your worst fear in the face and you found out it was it was really not so bad. They now, uh, as I said before, Goldman Sachs is predicting that gas prices are going to fall in Europe and that by the end of the winter, they're actually going to have an excess of supply of 20%. So I actually think they're through the hardest part of this, which was just dealing with the fact that for years they've worried, oh, what does it mean that we're so dependent on Russian gas? You know, is this the end of our economies if Putin pulls the plug? Well, Putin pulled the plug, and here we are. It seems to be working out okay. We will continue to monitor developments, of course, and uh, we look forward to having you back on for an update on uh, how everybody is doing, specifically Europe. Ted, uh, thank you very much.